I think, yeah, I know. Um, we talked about this last time when we were talking about uh, uh, the... We all love... What did you say that made people upset? I didn't say anything. People just like assumed or it like falsely claimed that I was just mad at Mr. Beast or something. Feeling smart or sapient as I like to call it. But what if I told you that there are people out there who get off of that very feeling as a living, who just talk and talk and talk for hours on end like a bunch of assholes and make money off of it. I'm obviously talking about video essay channels, the backbone of society. Video essays are really big on YouTube at the moment and have been for a while. At this point, for whatever topic or niche you might be interested in, there's probably some guy on the internet that has made a way too long video about it. You want to see a video the length of three feature films on Nikocado Avocado? Well, the right opinion has got you covered. You want to see a two and a half hour long video on the Vampire Diaries? Well, uh, Jenny Nicholson made the video right for you. Do you want to see a, a really good and intelligent and a good award-winning uh, analysis on the Mr. Beastification of YouTube? Uh, it's a genre on YouTube that I personally adore, and because of how wide the range of what a video essay can really be, it's been really fun to see the various ways that people manage to insert their own personality in whatever analysis they really want to make. These people spending sometimes months and months on end working on and researching the most obscure but interesting topics out there, it's super fun and interesting, and, and I'm not really alone in my enjoyment of this. Since these videos cover a pretty wide range of topics, their viral potential is absolutely huge, with videos sometimes getting millions and millions of views, so uh, that hard work can really pay off sometimes. But alongside the success of the more uh, higher quality video essay channels, we've also seen something else, and that is the rise of the mass-produced almost fast food chain like video essay channels with a twinge of corporate feeling. Channels who've realized how easy it can really be to capitalize off of the success. Okay, this jacket is fucking fire. It cannot go unnoticed. Someone needs to say something about it. I like the jacket. Very cool. Not even related to... It is not. It's ugly, man. I like it. ...of this genre, and uh, fully went for it, posting videos left and right like it's nobody's business. And the problem here is not just with the quantity of these videos, there's actually uh, some pretty decent video essay channels that post regularly but do uh, more short videos that are very good. The channels that I'm talking about make their videos in a factory, essentially. Sometimes they're even run by corporations. They make the video, like, on an assembly line. They'll have one guy uh, coming up with the, like, ideas and topics, have another person read out that script, and then another person to edit the whole thing in a, like, sleek and uh, even maybe too smooth of a way. And then someone to make a thumbnail with the most horrible and uh, repulsive piece of art you've ever seen in your entire life. And in a lot of these cases, there's probably not a lot happening here that is, I guess, morally wrong per se. It is just depressing. But I think it's fascinating to look into the eyes of this this beast, this machine. Does creating video essays in that way where you need to come up with uh, groundbreaking, attention-grabbing takes on an almost daily basis uh, cause some sort of problem? Or am I just a dumb little whiny baby? In today's five-hour long video essay, we're gonna figure out exactly- <laughs> This video is brought to you by my Patreon. If you want to support what I do over here, my Patreon link is in the description. Uh, you'll get an extra video off of it a month and a Discord. I have a Discord where I talk to people. It's just a nice way to, you know, support what's going on here if you feel inclined to do so. So yeah, how about you check that out, huh? <laughs> Part of the reason as to why this genre is as big as it is, is because of how broad the definition of what a video essay is can really be. There aren't any physical requirements for you to be able to call yourself a video essayist. You don't need a college degree. You don't need a, to have like a benefit if you don't.
a job in the field that, that you're talking about in advance, you can just be some sort of, like, idiot. You know, some kind of dumbass. A video essayist can just be some person with a take, and potentially a good and pro- Motherfuckers is rocking his coolest jackets for this video. Found one. <laughs> video essays can be long, they can be short, they could be about media, politics, a pickle Rick is a video essay, essentially any video that talks about like a subject with a script made in advance. Well, after doing a lot of thinking, I came to the realization that a lot of what uh, defines these videos, besides all being, you know, a piece of content that talks about and analyzes. This guy's saying so much nothing. He's, he's, uh, he's getting to the point. His main point is going to be about one type of uh, YouTube essay is Sunny V2. Uh, and there are other channels like him now, like, like Sunny V2. I would say Patrick CC even, uh, it does a similar type content. It's never like that. As a thing. Not as uh, aggressive. The main component that really ties them all together is one of aesthetics. A vibe. A certain type of, uh, title and thumbnail Ooh, that help indicate to you, the viewer, is another channel that you're about to watch to some... You know, some smart shit. And there's a lot of ways to achieve this effect. Maybe use some slick editing, maybe use some fancy words like, uh, sapien. And you know, just generally talking in a way that makes people believe that you're smarter. Or, or uh, sapien-er. And, you know, using these elements doesn't necessarily mean that the video that you're gonna make is bad. It's actually just like a common sort of bunch of common attributes to video essays. Since the qualifications for doing this job are essentially non-existent, a lot of these mass-produced video essay channels will essentially use these aesthetic elements as a way to make you think that what they're saying is a lot more profound than what it actually is. Uh, let's talk about Sunny V2. A lot of people have already talked about his Mr. Beast Chris video and how insanely dumb it really is. The Chris Tyson situation could become a complete disaster for Mr. Beast brand. However, it may also provide some unique benefits. The video is incredibly invasive and weird. Chris, who works with or for the Mr. Beast channel, has decided to come out as trans. Uh, something that's well within his right to do. As life decisions go, this isn't really something that's uh, any of Sunny V2's concern, uh, but the way that the video decides to focus on things is incredibly weird. So let's begin by going over the drama before explaining exactly how this will impact the Mr. Beast channel. Looking at this whole thing of like, uh, just Chris being open about who he is, as a Mr. Beast related business decision yeah. is a uh, freak shit. It's some freak shit, honestly. He tries to like, at some point analyze Chris's marriage. He is quite literally talking about Chris's life as if he's a character in a TV show. And if we've learned anything from Hollywood in recent years, it's that adding over the top LGBT characters for the sake of relatability rarely works as intended and is often nothing more than a distraction from the premise <laughs> of the movie or video. This is such a freak what makes this thing video to say. so ghoulish to me is the fact that he essentially ignores the fact that Mr. Beast and Chris are. Uh, human beings. Human beings that make decisions and choices that have nothing to do with, like, any form of content whatsoever. What Mr. Beast is deciding to do here is what he's done in his entire life. It's an inactive decision. He's just staying friends with someone who he's always been friends with. I remember when Mr. Beast was doing this interview and he was talking about how he intentionally chooses to show less uh, personality in his videos because A, it makes it so he can just relate to a broader audience, but also because uh, it makes him kind of stay away from drama and people attacking him. That is uh, a lot of pressure. Hmm. Because yeah. the, the product of the video is your personality. Well, yeah, because yeah. if you're depressed or you're yeah. going through stuff, you know, it's harder to make videos. And at the time, I definitely understood his point and thought that it makes sense. Uh, but this really, really, really just, I don't know, uh, proves his point fully. <laughs> Even this, this inactive choice of his, this decision to stay friends with someone, is being picked apart here and analyzed as a business decision. It's something for some Australian video essay guy 
to pick apart and analyze. It's something that's looked at as uh, content. Even when not talking about issues that are as sensitive, Sunny V2 has been having some dumbass takes for a while now. I've been, I, I don't know if hate watching is the right word, but like annoyingly watching or begrudgingly watching his videos for some Could time now. And time and time again, I've been absolutely shocked by the sort of things that he can get away with because of his sort of uh, posh adjacent Australian accent uh, where he sounds a bit like a news reporter. A few months after Dream's face reveal, Sunny V2 posted this video called Why Dream's face reveal was an awful decision. Dream's face reveal could qualify as the worst mistake made by a content creator ever. 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 This video is weird as hell, I'll, I'll tell you that much. In Dream's face reveal video, he talks about how part of the reason as to why he decided to show his face after all this time uh, is because of the looming threat of various uh, doxings and, you know, any sort of uh, information leak whatsoever. The obsessive attempts of fans and other people alike to try and figure out how this guy's face looks like uh, was starting to cross the line. The people trying to leak my face, trying to find out what I look like, trying to... There's too, there's too many. It's a, a little, a little, just a, a tiny, tiny bit too much. And you know, I, I don't want to come off in this video as some sort of a big dream defender. Uh, uh, I'm not, but I'm mainly looking at what he says here at the context of Sonny's video, and what he says makes a lot of sense, right? It makes sense to uh, not want to be doxxed. That doesn't seem like a lot of fun. This is an actual real threat to him and his loved ones, something real to worry about. There are more than enough cases of fans swarming private houses of people or even like haters and stuff. And worse, SWAT teams coming to people's houses, breaking them down, terrifying and traumatizing the people that live inside of them. It makes sense that he wouldn't like to deal with that. Obviously. But, but Sunny V2 doesn't really like this very much. Yet perhaps he was simply unaware of just how relevant these incidents were keeping him. Additionally, since almost all growth on YouTube comes from some kind of uncomfortability, Dream should have recognized this feeling as a signpost to let these attempted exposés continue, giving him wave after wave of free relevancy. What? He should have let go of the feeling of... What, being uncomfortable with his life being leaked out like that? With his private residence being known to- Dude, there are like commentators out there that perfectly fucking cater their commentary to like some of the most unhinged freakazoids online. And it's even worse if you are actually good at like editing. You know what I mean? Which Sunny V2 is. But basically- like, that video and the sentiment expressed in it are nearly identical to some of the... All of the downvoted LSF comments. It's like if you... Sunny V2 is basically what you get if you went to LSF and just, like, took the energy of all of the most downvoted comments and then fed it into a fucking AI bot and then spat out a video with those takes, which is, like... And there are a lot of people that do this shit. This guy has a video on you, I think. Wait, who? Pinely or Sunny V2? Because I don't think Pinely has a video on me. Uh, oh, well, I guess he does from uh, that one uh, random channel that fucking uh, ripped his video. It was the incident? Why do you guys talk about it like it was like such a devastating thing? Like, we literally immediately talked to one another and we dealt with it. Like, he's not mad at me. We know each other. Like, what the fuck is that? The incident. You're making it seem like it was like... Drama perverts, dude. To the public? He should have just been like, what, like, fine with that being a thing? The potential of having a home invasion or getting swatted for... For what? For clout? Because these attempts at his invasion of privacy uh, can be like reported on and go viral, 
that 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 seems like a good excuse for that are you are you crazy sunny v2 is showing on screen dreams actual doxing information that random people have leaked online i decided to blur it but i mean this is again an actual real threat something uh, for you to really worry about. It's not that Sonny is giving a counter-argument to what Dream is saying. He's not saying that, you know, um, maybe face revealing won't change the doxing situation all that much. Maybe it'll make it even worse. That's an actual fair argument that you might bring up and saying why face revealing is a bad idea. And that would be fair enough. But that's not what he's doing. He accepts Dream's concerns. He agrees that they're a real thing, uh, but he tells him to ignore them because making money is more important than that. In the world of Sunny V2's videos, no decision can be made uh, to just better your own personal life. Everything has to be done with the context of content as a calculated move to feed the algorithm, which. Yeah, a lot of people. I think a lot of people's brains are broken by being online so much. I do think that like a lot of people see it that way. Um, there, I mean, uh, Piley touches on the parasocial aspect, married to the fucking capitalism. Uh, like everything is for content and everything has a dollar value associated with it so perfectly because that's exactly what the problem is. That is the heart of the problem here is that at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break and people still don't know that you can avoid those ads by subscribing for $5 or for free. Okay. Right. You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. It's a real issue, but at least you guys are now more knowledgeable on the matter, more knowledgeable on the process than ever before. There it is. Here's the three minute ad break now. Which explain uh, why his videos feel like they were made by a cold-hearted robot. Throughout the entire video, Sonny talks in a really authoritative tone. I mean, the video in itself is called Why Dream's Face Reveal Was an Awful Decision. He presents it as if the decision has already proven itself as being bad, but it's important to state that uh, this was posted like in between when Dream face revealed and when Dream released his next video. At the time of Sunny releasing that video, he actually didn't really know if Dream's face reveal was a bad idea or not. He just knew that the idea of saying that would uh, drive clicks to his video. Yes, his next upload did actually get a lot less views than he usually does, but that could just be a I feel like a lot of people have this idea that it's okay to be a permanently online weirdo as long as you're making money off of it. Um, sure. I also feel like uh, there's an idea where like there are permanently online people like myself. And because I'm like permanently online in certain ways, you can, uh, I don't know, destroy my privacy in other ways that I like purposely don't talk about. You know what I mean? And people will literally do that and then turn around and go, well, that's accountability. It's like, no, it's not. You're being a cyber stalker. Like that's not, you know what I mean? You're, you, you think it's called accountability, but like, what did you, what did you, what did I have to do accountability for? You know what I mean? I guess maybe not playing video games, but that's pretty much it. Yeah. Legit people will excuse whatever and say, well, you're a public figure. What did you expect? Exactly. Attributed to the fact that Dream has just quit the one series that was really successful for him. In general, if you really want to look at the lesson here from Dream's decline in views, it's uh, don't just have one idea, you know? <laughs> don't just do one idea for like, you should probably have like at least two or three more ideas. Even way before the face reveal, every time Dream tried to like kinda stray away from uh, making those Hunter vs. Speedrunner videos, it would get way less views, even in like a normal Minecraft video. It makes a lot of sense that a video that's just a, a like a vlog of Dream and a bunch of people and Mr. Beast going through Antarctica, uh, it makes sense that it won't do as well. His Minecraft audience is just not as interested in that. Not to mention that Minecraft videos have been getting a lot less views this year because, you know, lockdown's over. Kids are back in school. But that's sort of normal. No, that it, it's it's a bit of both, but I think um, the main problem there 
Yeah, overall, uh, Minecraft comes and goes in waves, right? Every five years, there's another wave of Minecraft where, like, another group of 10-year-olds to 12-year-olds get uh, invested in the uh, in the the uh, wonderful, bountiful world of Minecraft. Um, but on top of that, the other thing is, like, any YouTube channel... Every YouTuber knows this at this point. Anytime you try to fucking do something different on your YouTube channel, you're cooked. You are literally better off. You are literally better off making a new YouTube channel than using your old YouTube channel for something different. I'll give you an example of my YouTube, right? So, youtube.com slash Hasanabi takes you to my original YouTube channel, right? What the fuck? I don't have the username still. What the hell? That's weird. I thought I got the username. But anyway. Oh, okay. So look. If you go to my YouTube, Hasanabi, 1.25 million subscribers, and you look at some of my videos, most of my popular videos are like debates or reactions, the Ben Shapiro, other commentators, yada, yada, yada. Right? That's the kind of content that works really well on my uh, platform, on this YouTube channel. Notice something that's missing from that? Gaming videos, okay? I've uploaded gaming videos on here. They don't really do that well, unless it's like super duper unique. Because the algorithm looks at this as a political news channel that does reaction and commentary. So anything that strays outside of those boundaries will get fucking buried in the algorithm. Another thing that's missing from here, noticeably absent, is IRL content, vlog style IRL content that is not expressly political. So um, here, this is like the first gaming video that we've seen so far. I hired uh, e-girls to carry me in Warzone, right? So that's just what it is, right? There's the, the debates, reactions, and the like. There are, there are actually, um, here, like anime expo. Like when I went to the anime expo, that was a incredible, that was an incredible, uh, in my opinion, YouTube oh. video, uh, that was cut off of my IRL stream and it only got 407,000 views on this channel. That would have been, that's a banger video that normally under normal circumstances with the amount of care, attention, detail, all of that goes it should be much higher than that, but it only got 400,000 views because it's not hitting the algo in the same way that it does. And I'll give you a great example of what I did to combat this, right? We made a second channel. It's called Hassan, at Hassan, okay? It's currently sitting at only 114 subscribers. Look at the view counts on these videos, especially original content, especially repackaged vlog content in the identical... 114, what, 114K subscribers, 114,000 subscribers. If you look at the videos on this channel, okay, there's not that many, right? Almost every single vlog content has done incredible numbers. That This channel is new. It only has 114,000 subscribers, and yet there are videos on here, like you can see, with 300,000, 400,000, 300,000, 400,000 subscriber uh, uh, views. That is because the YouTube algo is looking at this as a vlog channel, okay? Or a channel that has, like, different kinds of content that isn't, um, that isn't just, like, locked into one specific type of content and uh, that is, like, reacts and, and news and politics, like, that's it. This is the reason why YouTube fucking hates variety. Uh, variety content on the same channel. This is precisely the reason why you put everything on different channels. Like, in my opinion, and I don't know why Charlie doesn't do this, here's the Fear End podcast with 200K subscribers doing really great. If I post these Fear End podcast videos on my main channel, 
it would literally do worse. There's also a gaming channel for those of you who want to watch some of my older gaming footage or uh, even newer gaming footage. This one did well. Resident Evil 4 Remake is terrifying. 40k views. Holy shit. Crazy. Anyway. So with Charlie, for example, I'll give you, I'll give you the example. Charlie, most critical, has I was an 13 extra. million subscribers. 13 million subscribers. If you look at his videos, almost every single one of his videos is over a million views. Almost a lot of his videos are over 2 million views, sometimes 3 million views, except for the podcast. Look at this shit. He's got the Moist Meter, 1.3 million. I ruined a Taylor Swift concert. It's like some IRL stuff, right? That's still within like the, the realm of Charlie. But like his sit-down commentary is what absolutely bangs, okay? But guess what's not banging? On the same channel, look at this. The official podcast, 140,000 views. If Charlie had set up an official podcast account for himself, which I don't know why he doesn't feature any other channels. Like, I don't know why he hasn't done that. Okay? If he had set up another channel, he literally would have more views on his podcast. It's so odd. I doubt that's the algorithm, though. It's way different content type that his viewers might not be into. Bro, it doesn't matter. Like, look, some of his videos are 60 minutes long. Some of them are 8 minutes long. Some of them are 9 minutes long. Some of them are fucking 3 minutes long. You know what I mean? And I'm sure he has longer length videos on his channel as well that have done all right, maybe poorly. Who knows? My point is this. It's not because uh, the, the podcast is an hour long that it's doing poorly. That's one factor. It's because it's dramatically different than the type of content that he's making on his main channel. And the irony is that if he were to set up a new channel, if he were to set up a new channel for his podcast, it would do better. He just always says he doesn't care. It's not that important to him. He just does, does what he wants to do. The podcast is also a big Patreon. My, I, I just don't know why it's, it doesn't take that much to make a new YouTube channel. Like, I, I don't understand it. Who asked you? I mean... My audience did. I'm talking about, I'm giving you a, a, a pretty classic example of YouTube algorithm. And I'm describing it to you through my own personal experience with the algorithm. But I'm also ex describing it to you from one of the largest fucking channels out there. What the fuck is this? Kill him, I'll give you- This is his channel with 900k subscribers? Oh, it's the Moist Charlie clips. Yeah, I mean, he uploads a lot on here. And this is just from a stream, I think. Anyway, just something interesting to think about for those of you who didn't know. It's like a, it's a brief moment where I just like kind of pop the lid and show you what's underneath. You know what I mean? I hope you appreciated it. Maybe you don't, but. Normal expo. No, dude, I didn't hear about the trans ally that got dropped from San Francisco Pride. I don't care, actually. You, 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 I hope you figured it out. I don't. Stop spamming it. Like, I don't know what that is. And I don't care, okay? Please, I, I don't want to... Oh, my God. Like, I'm covering something so unrelated this whole time. This is the guy who got his YouTube knowledge from Mughal Mail. Mughal Mail is one of the most successful YouTube channels. What the fuck are you talking about? Ludwig is like... I mean, Ludwig... 
not he's no Mr. B's, but he is very good. Oh my god. Taylor Swift and Matt Healy arriving at her Nashville condo and new obtain a new photos obtained by the Daniel Mail. First of all, how can you tell this is Matt Healy? How? I think it's pretty funny that... I do think it's pretty funny that Taylor Swift is like one degree like of separation from Come Town. Or not Come Town, sorry. Uh, the Adam Friedland show. What do they take this? Taylor and a random shadow. Yeah, literally. The sideburns are very Matt Healy. Bro, what do you mean? What sideburns? Like, am I am I seeing something that you guys are Am I failing to see something that you guys are seeing? Like, am I blind? Where I see an arm, I think, and a watch. I don't see shit else, dude. What the fuck? The fact that I made this picture with AI as a joke... Yeah, I remember you DMing me about it. It's weird that they're posting and pretending it's real. Yeah, no, this is like, this is someone who's memeing, dude. There's no fucking, no. Here, I highlighted them for you. Oh, what the fuck, M HUD? Chill. I can't, I can't click away. Why do you hate feminists and anti-feminists play truth or drink? Oh my Lord. What the fuck is this? What the freaking frick is this, dude? Oh God, Weeby, you always have the most brain broken content. I love that shit. Explanation is not enough for Sunny V2. He needs to create some sort of weird lesson here, some sort of cautionary tale. Don't face reveal or uh, you'll be less rich, I guess. Don't make decisions to better your personal life if you're gonna make less money off of it. It often feels like with Sunny V2's videos, the main actual thing that's being thought of here is just the title and thumbnail. And then you click on the video and it's a mess, you know, a neat and organized one, but still a mess at that. I feel like if you take away this sort of like, you know, the way that he talks with that accent of his and the, the sleek editing that looks like a, like you're watching an Apple commercial and those thumbnails, those, those, those god awful thumbnails, so freakish and made out of plastic. I know it's bad to make fun of like a person's art, but these look like NFTs. This, this looks like pure ass. <laughs> Cause I guess it's essentially traced over the original pictures, but like it looks in the sort of pop art, pop, is pop art a, the word that I'm, I'm thinking of here? It looks like ass. That's all I'm, I'm trying to say really. <laughs> all of this is here to sell AI you generated. the the allure, the idea that something substantial and meaningful is about to be said here. That's why. <laughs> Scooby Dio says it's cool that this guy made a transphobic video and now he's getting bullied into oblivion. 
Yeah, it's usually the opposite that happens. Like, you come out as, like, trans or you come out as, like, an ally to trans people and then you get bullied into oblivion. So it's fun to see the uh, reverse of that very common meta for once. Partially because it is the Mr. Beast brand that this guy is, like, attacking. You know what I mean? Not necessarily Mr. Beast brand, but, like, Mr. Beast himself. With every Sunny V2 upload, you'll get like a billion people reacting to that thing, mouth open, as this guy says one of the dumbest takes I've ever heard of my entire life. The video in itself is nothing but an afterthought, something to justify the title and thumbnail that he picked. In reality, after you click on one of these videos, the guy could essentially still say whatever he wants and get the same- It's not cool he made that transphobic vid. Yeah, no one in this community thinks that that's cool, man. I don't know why you literally just misunderstood everything. The amount of views because the aesthetic does such a good job of selling you the whole thing. The need to feed this beast called the algorithm doesn't just end in a few bad takes. Sometimes... Uh, you may run out of ideas to talk about because you upload so much. And when that happens, you may need to result to a little thing that I like to call stealing. A few months ago, a YouTuber called The Asher Show made a video about a channel called Anna Oop, a video essay slash a tea channel slash content farm channel posting videos every single day. Anna Oop's channel is absolutely huge with over 2 million subscribers and uh, most of their content is like uh, drama related stuff. Zendaya called out for forcing her stylist to quit. Uh, Charlie D'Amelio cheats on Landon with mystery guy. Nessa Barret, Barret, like the hat, accused of dating. Whoa! What the fuck? I'm learning too much. Pinely, no! Oh my god, I learned. I- oh god. No, not Nessa Barrett. Who are all these people? It's like, dude, sometimes I feel... Sometimes I feel like I live on a different planet. I feel like I just know... Like, I'm so old. I feel like they just made these names up. Like, this is like an AI-generated image. AI-generated names. You know what I mean? Like, I have no fucking idea what any of this shit is, okay? Olivia Rodrigo's <laughs> sirens. I'm in New York right now, and there's just noise everywhere. There's, like, sirens going off. There's helicopters going off. Is that Zach B a king of the night? Yeah. Yes, it is. I do know that. That's Zach B a king of the night. This uh, place is like a war zone uh, intended to make me to make me regret filming my video on a rooftop. It's a bunch of videos. Uh, that have clearly not been made for me. And that's okay. It's okay for a channel to make videos that I'm not supposed to watch. Uh, but every now and again, uh, yeah, Anna Oop likes to dabble in a little bit of Anna... Anna... <laughs> I was trying to think of a pun. She dabbles in stealing. Like Asher says in his video, it makes sense for multiple people to come up with a video on the same topic. I'm sure that's something that I've done in the past as well. We all get the same news cycle. We see the same trending topics on Twitter. Do you? Because I don't even see any trending topics on Twitter anymore. It's just like all random cryptocurrency shit. Well, actually... Currently, my fucking, uh, what's happening, uh, trending tab is hashtag fanboy, hashtag uh, trending DPRK, politics trending Greg Abbott, trending in California, Demon Slayer. Very cool. Thank you, Elon. Let's look at the trending tab. Number one is Harden. Hashtag Onika wins again. Larson, Maxi, Joe Mazula, Tobias Harris, Brogdon, Neong. Hashtag Miami GP, Jack Hughes, SUVs, Canes, Play the Song, The Beard, Red Bull, FaZe, Bryce Miller. 
optic. I am not knowledgeable, nor do I care about any of this shit, dude. In news is BlackRock, Tumblr, Elizabeth Holmes. I know this one. This one is drama. It's not Elizabeth Holmes anymore. Now it's Liz Holmes. The New York Times did an incredible puff piece on Elizabeth Holmes, by the way, which I will be covering uh, tomorrow. Where's your blue sky invite at? Okay. For the past month or so, I have had, I believe, around 35 codes sent to me. <laughs> I have yet to join Blue Sky. Okay? Maybe I will down the line. I'm happy for everyone who's using it. I hope it's a, it's a Twitter alternative that's better. I just have too much social media. Okay, I, I have too much. I don't need more. I, I can't do more. Okay? Give them out. I don't even know if I, like, they're. You shouldn't be able to see that New York Times article if you have ad block. Yeah, that shit's crazy. And we decide to make videos based on those topics. Sometimes you might scroll on your homepage on YouTube and see a video idea that you want to do yourself. But you come up with your own title, you come up with your own video idea, and you add something different. And most importantly, you credit the person that you may have taken it from. But you shouldn't just fully, like, rip off a guy. <laughs> That's kind of rude. <laughs> if you end up finding yourself taking inspiration from someone, which is, you know, absolutely fine, by the way, uh, the least you can do is maybe, I don't know, credit the guy, do something like that. I, I feel like that should be kind of like common courtesy with YouTubers. Which, you know, in Sunny V2's defense, that is something that he's done in the past. And Anna has at times as well, but mostly hasn't. Her level of ripping someone off. I think someone has, uh, I mean, Ben Shapiro stole from Sunny V2, by the way. That was really interesting to think about. Uh, should be studied in, in, in universities. Uh, she'll essentially like fully rip off some talking points for people like word to word and then also like not leave it at that. She'll steal the thumbnail as well. This is my thumbnail. You can obviously see where Anna Oop got the idea for the thumbnail from. It's definitely mine. If you watch the video, the content is almost, it's like I did all of the research for her video and she just reskinned it for her channel. And you know, uh, the goal of doing that is k kind of crazy, you know? Throughout Asher's video, you can see time and time again, Anna Oop doing that sort of thing, stealing the video, the title, and the thumbnail, and then also just profiting off of it like crazy because the channel is huge. And she, or the company that's behind this channel, uh, know that they can get away with that sort of thing. And there's something about that that's incredibly frustrating. April 20th, 2021, I made a video called Meet the Biggest Copycat on TikTok. It was about this TikToker, New Main, who would steal other people's videos. Sound familiar? Nine months later, the most disgusting guy on TikTok, Anna Oop. Original copy, the guy's in the middle. Original copy, the guy's in the middle. People are praising Anna Oop in the comments. I love your videos. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Anna, for this vid. As a content creator, what are you really supposed to do? here you're going up again bro this is like i wonder if this is worse than react content because a lot of people talk about how react content is like ruined youtube or whatever but like you know there's react content and then there's react content right like for example sometimes the the person who's reacting to the youtube video will like to add a shitload of additional commentary to it you know some people think that that's fine other people think that that's still not valid Meanwhile, this is like a direct carbon copy. It's like a copy paste of that other person's YouTube video with your socials on it. You know what I mean? I don't know. For the record, I'm not even saying that like uh, one is better than the other. I'm actually asking because I mean, I, I know I do react content. I don't really mind, uh, or not mind. I, I don't really care if people say like, oh, you do react content, like fuck you or whatever, especially because when it comes to political stuff, like, no, that's my bread and butter. Like I am dramatically changing the content when I'm doing reacts to political stuff. 
And I try to bring that energy to like any YouTube video that I watch, including videos like this or even random dumbass videos, like even Master Chef reacts. You know what I mean? I like to add uh, entirely different uh, uh, kinds of reactions to it. And at the heart of that, um, at the heart of that is still like the same principle that made, you know, Cody and, and Noel very famous, right? Like that's what a lot of YouTube essays do for the most part. They're reacting to stuff. Um, they're just not doing it live. Uh, they're doing it in, you know, they're, they're editing it. And then you only see the final, uh, you know, version of that. Yeah, same with Curtis, Drew, Danny, and Jarvis, yeah. Against a massive company, a content farm, a factory. When what a channel does is just push out content again and again and again to feed this sort of machine no matter what, who gives a shit about what they're stealing from? They're just gonna do it because they need to keep going. Asher is probably just one example out of many that yeah, have experienced a very similar thing. If not by Anna Oop, then by another one of these sort of uh, content farmy sort of channel. <laughs> Standing in front of this machine, this beast, can make you feel helpless. Tiny. And if you can't really beat them, why not join them? Jake Tran and Illuminati, Illuminati, yeah, I think that's how I'm supposed to say it, are two YouTubers that seemingly content farmed, content farmified their channel, uh, each one posting a billion video essays a week. Illuminati is now posting, I think, a video essay every single day. How? It's kind of crazy. I didn't used to watch Illuminati, so I'm not gonna focus on that channel, but with Jake Tran specifically, I remember a bunch of his videos showing up in my feed, and... Jake Tran is a really interesting content creator because, like, I watch a lot of his videos, and it's, like, impossible to pin down his politics. I find that very interesting. Like, it's like a libertarian, I'm pretty sure, but he's like a, he's like a libertarian with like an interest in crypto, but like some, in a lot of instances, he just like says some shit where you're like, what the fuck? Like, is he woke? Like, what is happening? Uh, they were pretty cool. He a lot of times had some pretty meaningful stuff to say. A lot of videos had some pretty, you know, interesting uh, lessons about like really bad businesses. He was talking about a bunch of things that should be called out. The lengths that evil businesses could go uh, just to just to make a quick buck. And then he became rich. His team became absolutely massive. He got like a voice actor to do some stuff for him for his videos. And then, like the subjects of his own videos, he essentially just started doing the very same things that he was like talking about. He made a video about how like the lottery is bad and scamming you. And then he promoted a, a, a gambling thing. <laughs> Making like anti-NFT videos and then promoting NFT projects in those very same videos. You know what's really interesting about this? Like, you only get mad at this if you already had an expectation from this channel that it was supposed to, like, mean something. You know what I mean? Like, if you, if you already... Like, I am not shocked by that at all. Maybe because, like, I always thought that he was portraying the role of like a centrist in, in, in a lot of ways in his content. So this kind of stuff doesn't shock me really that he's doing this kind of shit. I mean, it, it Piley's right. Like this, it does show that he has no backbone or any sort of like moral integrity, which I think is kind of important for commentary. If commentary is the main reason why people are watching you. You know what I mean? I showed how he had started selling NFTs in videos about how bad NFTs are or selling crypto in a video about how crypto is. And it was just so weird to watch. And it's obvious why he took those deals. Um, lots of money. Lots of money is on the table over here. Uh, more money than any sort of sponsor could give you whatsoever. These goddamn crypto uh, projects just throw out cash willy-nilly probably offering him like hundreds of thousands of dollars an amount of money that 
I guess is hard to say no to even if you're a millionaire. But even with that being the case, you know, you'd think that he'd have some shame about it. Uh, but his response to all of that was, uh, worse? Quote, what did you expect out of a channel that teaches you to be evil? I do really appreciate the honesty of this. But on the other, much more important hand, uh, you're kind of admitting that you don't care if your audience gets scammed by you, which it seems really wrong. He then added that every sponsor on this channel helps fund this channel so we can help upping the quality and quantity. You're not gonna be the right fit for every sponsor on this channel, and that's okay. So if you don't like the sponsors, skip the ads, don't buy for them, or unsubscribe from the channel. Uh, which is a really funny answer. <laughs> <laughs> I did it because I wanted more money. <laughs> Dig Tran also sells like an online course now that teaches you how to like uh, get a bunch of money from a laptop job. Um, I don't know what qualifies him to really do that. <laughs> how to systematically find out what remote job is best for you. People don't live happy lives by mistake. Success is systematic, planned, and carefully executed. Yeah, I mean, every person that tries to sell you the idea that success is systematic should probably kind of <laughs> watch out from them. How to crush any interview. I bombed all my interviews, it was awful, but the great news for you, I mean, again, you know, remember what I told you that video essayists don't really need um, any sort of qualifications to do what they do. I guess you don't really need any qualifications to start one of these bullshit ass courses. Um, it, this costs $97. He's just posting a random ass picture over here with uh, of him and Graham Stephan. What's going on? The video <laughs> how Quebble Cop lost his entire audience in one year by Sunny V2 is uh, ass. It's just. Oh fuck, I watched this video. God damn. Just ass. It's a rambling mess. The video is about 15 minutes long. The first third of it is spent just speculating whether his uh, relationship. I just remember like the highlights, though. You know what I mean about how he like. First of all, I just remember the the highlights of like him having partnerships and then like ruining them. I don't know why the fuck. And then I think he went on like a. Uh, is Kaya all right? Why is there no Kaya cam? Chat, any idea? She's dead. I killed her. And I ate her. Yeah. No, she's not all right. Yeah. Ship with Azzyland ending is the reason for his decline? In order to answer that question, let's begin by looking at a Twitter post made by Quibble Cop in early 2000. Yeah, I feel like when I watch... I feel like when I watch uh, Sunny V2... Sunny V2 videos. I always, I always just like forget all the silly speculative parts. And I use it as like a, like a, like a Wikipedia article. You know what I mean? Because I remember thinking about like how irrelevant this part of the conversation was, to me at least. 2020. Before things go any further, I want to address the rumors. After three and a half years of being together, Azzy and I recently broke up. He talks about their breakup and their relationship for a while, only to reveal at the end of it all uh, that it's all baseless. There is no correlation between this breakup and Quebble Cop losing viewers. Sure, he had one less person to collaborate and make videos with. However, if we take the date of Geordie's separation announcement, March 2020, and place it alongside his view count at the time, he actually went up in views after breaking up with Azzyland. So why is he bringing it up? It's just weird. Sunny brings a lot more potential reasons to Quebble Cop's decline. Some of them uh, make more sense than others. Uh, him separating from his. So this feels like a hit piece just because of Cloud. You can gain from hating on Sunny V2 at the moment as well. Sunny V2 has some dark shit videos, but has some good ones too. He plays a YouTube game. That's all I think. Nah, Sunny V2 has always been like a praying for your downfall type YouTuber. Um, the video that uh, definitely made me think twice about his content because he he does edit very well, but. The video that made me think twice about his content was the ninja one. And I, I'm not even like a fucking fan of ninja, which Sunny V2 seemingly was. Because it was such a like a fallen fan type video that he made on ninja that I was like, what the fuck? 
Like, what is happening here? Like, why are you this invested in ninja not saying slurs? <laughs> yeah, he has a hate boner for Ethan. He has, like, kind of... uh made like kind of a defensive video on keemstar this group channel having a beef with uh some guy uh a lot of really interesting stuff i'll, I'll tell you that much but then sunny reaches to his ultimate point the one that's presented in his ugly ugly thumbnail for all its glory his thesis is that quibble cop lost his audience because he bragged about being rich. Welcome to my seven and a half million dollar penthouse tour. Let's see if this video can hit 100,000 likes. And it's just like, why would you post this dude? You think it's just a coincidence that David Dobrik got canceled in the same month that he posted his brand new multi- What? A million dollar house to YouTube. When you invite envy into the life of others, you pay for it in ways which you will not expect. Little Joel, who's kind of like Big Joel but smaller, uh, made a pretty good point about it in a video. The data does not prove out this point, really. You know, there's a trend in Quibble Cop's views. They've been declining for a pretty long time. And it's not like the month that he released these three videos changed everything for him, you know, ruined his career. It's kind of just been a slow decline. One, Quibble Cop is doing worse than he used to. Two, he did a thing that Sunny V2 and that I don't like. He bragged about his wealth. What you can do with that is just kind of make a connection. What if the reason why Quibble Cop's not doing that well is the fact that he's doing something that I don't like? You don't really <laughs> need evidence to support that conclusion. It's sort <laughs> of evidence is itself. The real <laughs> Big Joel is great. He's he's all he's got some great takes. The reality of the situation is lots of things happen in the world. YouTubers are not successful forever. They do better, they do worse. To generate some causal relationship between their being problematic in some way and them not doing well, what it serves to do is is, is kind of give us the fantasy of control, right? It gives us the sort of moralistic this fantasy Joe, that negative actions swine? are getting punished Sorry. and people get their due. It speaks, I think, to a desire to make the universe make sense. And I think that's a really interesting point. It's why I decided to leave it in this video, mainly in full, to kind of speak for itself. But I also think that Big Joel is kind of missing something here. I don't think that Sunny V2 says what he says at the end of that. Hey everybody, I'm sitting here. I'm sitting. My dog is resting behind me. She's having a rest behind me. She's enjoying. And I'm, I'm sitting as well. And I'm thinking tonight about discourse concerning rich socialists. Like, whenever some big leftist, usually Hassan, uh, buys something extravagant or whatever, shows off that he has money in any way, there's a conversation often had by conservatives, but also by uh, good faith leftists. Good faith. I'm um, talking about how he's not an authentic socialist, about how it's, you know, it's hypocrisy or whatever. And I... I I, I, obviously, this is a very dated discourse and a very old conversation to be having, but it's just striking me tonight just how corrosive this entire conversation is to any kind of real political thought. And let me try to explain what I mean. Chad didn't so, link it. I found it. I my main to show problem it. with this argument about rich leftists not being real leftists is that Charity as a concept is a, a virtue. It's a virtuous thing to do for everybody. Everybody almost agrees that giving of yourself, sacrificing for other people, giving people what they need is a good thing to do. It's not leftist to give people things that they need. It's simply kind. And yeah. I, the problem I have is that what we're really doing when we call people hypocrites, hypocritical leftists for not being more charitable is making... No, this guy's not a grifter at all. He's right. You found this pro-rich propaganda to show us? No. Oh, my God. You guys are such fucking dumbasses half the time. I, I hope you're trolling, okay? No, man. He's saying you don't even have to be a good person necessarily to be a leftist, Okay. Like, doing charity, which, by the way, isn't even, like, the opposite of buying a car, for the record, okay? So, on that front, I don't even fully agree with what he's saying. But the overarching 
argument that he's making is absolutely correct, okay? He's not even saying I'm a bad person, but he's saying you don't necessarily have to be this, like, moral, kind individual that everybody likes and thinks is, like, fucking brilliant to be a, a socialist, okay? In the argument that to be a leftist means being a good person. And no, it doesn't. It absolutely does not. Being a leftist, believing in socialism, these are completely unrelated. These do not make you a good person. Yeah. At all. Like, you can be an absolutely shitty, garbage human being. To be clear, I'm not saying Hassan is. I mean, this isn't a call-out video for Hassan. You know, I don't know his finances. What I don't know who he is. Whatever. But you can be an absolutely shitty, garbage human being. Fuck you, asshole. And still be a leftist. And, and, and any argument to the, to the contrary of that is really saying that leftism is just your little virtuous culture club. I hate that shit. And to be clear, you know, by all means, judge whoever you want to judge. Be mad at whoever you want to be mad at. I have no beef with you for getting snippy online with whoever you think is too rich. That's just good fun. That's just that's just a good thing to do with your time, frankly. I don't know. Being mad at rich people, whatever. Have fun. But I would just caution against making it about some deep-seated ideological leftist issue yeah. because it just doesn't add up. It just doesn't add up. The best thing... This was one of my biggest fucking anger points with, like, the, the constantly unearthed discord, discourse that they would, like, revitalize over and over and over again, which is like, oh, Hassan is rich. He's not a real leftist. Like, yeah, no, I don't get... Get mad at rich people is fine. I mean, am I the right rich person to get mad at? I don't think so. One, because of, like, my proximity to, like, actual wealth. Two, the way I make my money. And uh, last but not least, uh, I would say that, uh, you know, I, I think I do a, a decent job with my finances in the way that, like, uh, you know, in the way that related to the wealth that they have. Uh, most people that shit on me don't, percentage-wise, I mean. However, having said that, the thing that really frustrates me again is that they would liken this, they would moralize this kind of hatred because you can't just like hate someone and be like, you know what, I don't like his vibes. You can't just do that. You have to literally find like a legitimate moral reason. Like, oh man, I don't like him because he's fucking bad at, at a person being a person about leftism really is that it He's deals not a real with the leftist. real world that it deals with actual material forces leftists don't or at least shouldn't believe friend of a friend who was a fan of this guy got really mauled at me for being your friend like a year ago he's not even disagreeing with 99 things that they say 99 percent of the things you say is so funny they can't actually say why they dislike you or remember why they did once did or anything it was funny yeah no it's literally because we're all sheep at the end of the day i do this every single person does this it is because a lot of motherfuckers, okay, a lot of motherfuckers have said he's bad, he's cringe, he's mainstream, we don't like that. So everyone else is like, oh, fuck, God forbid I find myself uh, defending this guy on the timeline. All the cool guys are going to make fun of me too. You know what I mean? That's it. That's, that's, that's basically what it is. Human beings are very stupid. And a lot of people find, like, leftism to be, like, a hipster thing. You know what I mean? Like the Red Scare? No, I, I think the Red Scare podcast has very genuine ideological differences with me. And that's the reason why they uh, hate me. Because they're fucking stupid. That's different. I, there's a valid reason for the Red Scare podcast to hate me. Uh, look. You know. They're definitely, we do not agree on a lot of stuff. Oh, you said, oh, no, not the podcast. I meant like McCarthyism. Oh, okay. My bad. I hate your content because you're rich and cringe. I hate it because you lie about fun content on a weekly basis. On a daily basis, we are not the same. First of all, I'm not even fucking cringe. The funniest part about this is that, like, the 98% of the time, the people that fucking say I'm cringe are people that are, like, 
uh, effort posting uh, schizo memes, okay? You can copy them all you want. In the real world, as uh, you know, I am probably a lot more normal than the average person who spends eight to 10 hours online, okay? There's a reason why every single person that you, uh, that you meet that has uh, met me in real life will not say that I am cringe. It's not a word that they would use. I'm cringe in the circles that I exist in. The circles that I exist in have this dramatic aggression towards people who are who resemble their bullies. Okay? People who resemble their bullies coming into their spaces and encroaching in their spaces is something that like nerds have hated for a very long time. That's pretty much what it is. It's like, oh, this guy fucking came in here. He thinks he's one of us. Like, fuck you. You don't even know how to play video games well, you fucking piece of shit. Fuck you, loser. Kind of like that. You get to be the king. You get to be the god king of uh, the terminally online contingency. And then you got someone who, you know, had like a normal life leading up to this very moment where I also became like relatively successful on Twitch, you know, and, and that shit pisses people off. One of the most normal in public couldn't even buy propane. First of all, successfully bought it. Let's be real. And, um, bro really glazing himself today. I mean, it's not, it's not, I don't think it's like me glazing myself when I say that, like, I'm cringe to the, not to the average person, but to the average Twitter user who's extremely online. And I look through a lot of the posts that are, uh, that are like, dude, this guy fucking sucks. I hate him. He's so cringe. He's so bad. He's like so immoral. Um, and the people that, the people that say that oftentimes are like, you know, they got like lolly avatars. Like, like, do you think, like, do you think normal people would look at you and go, you're, you're a normal guy? Like, do you think they would look at your profile and be like, that's a normal guy versus my profile or me as a human being? Like, who do you think looks more normal to the average person? No. It's the same principle behind, again, it's the same exact principle behind, like, in the, you know, Land of the Blind, the one-eyed uh, man is king. In the land of... <laughs> in the land of extremely online weirdos who get to post whatever kind of unhinged shit they want to under the guise of anonymity, yes, someone... Uh, who tries to tailor his commentary and his content, no matter which platform he's on, to like uh, normies is going to look like he's cringe. He's trying too hard. You know what I mean? that Hassan should rule the world, that he is exempt from class forces, that, that we are all autonomous moral agents. And if you just put us in charge, we would be amazing at it and not selfish. That's a horrible belief and it's not true. We are all to some extent selfish. We all act according to our own interests and it would be better, of course, if we were all more charitable, more giving of ourselves. But the point of leftism very much is not to come out with a new breed of human being, to pretend that we are somehow the elite group of the best people who just do all the best things and that's our ideology. All it is is fart smelling. It's a fart smelling oh, yeah. discourse. That's my take. Uh, goodbye. Thoughts lines with the Oompa Loompa disc crisis is deafening. Calling what some people conceive of leftism. Your little virtuous culture club is such a fucking banger. Yeah. I think the last time I watched this video, I talked about it before. Um, where I said, like, you can make an argument to eviscerate homelessness 
from a selfish perspective. I have before, just for the fun of it. If you don't want to recognize the humanity or the human suffering that the homelessness crisis creates, you can absolutely look at it with an incredibly cold, calculated, selfish, and logical way. Okay? Which is, you don't want to fucking deal with that. So why the fuck aren't we paying someone to deal with that? Oh, wait, we are paying for someone to deal with that. If you don't want to think about it like, oh, my God, that's a human being suffering on the streets. We need to solve this issue. What the fuck is going on? Why is nobody saying anything about it? You can literally make an argument for more social welfare from a deeply and fundamentally, I guess, selfish point of view. You know? That video in this sort of attempt to figure out the universe. I don't believe that Sunny V2 really cares about that, at least in the context of his videos. I, I don't know him in real life. This all comes down to what we talked about at the beginning, that Sunny's videos are mainly an afterthought to his title and thumbnail. That's why he gives about like five or six different possible reasons as to why Quebblecop uh, lost his viewership. And the one that makes the least sense, the one that is the most odd and out of place, is also the one that he put in his thumbnail. He created this narrative of a man uh, losing everything because he boasted about his wealth because it's interesting, because it's good content. And I think that that's the actual dangerous thing here. Twisting human life so it fits the narrative of something like a TV show. It's essentially what he did with Chris, Mr. Beast, or Dream. He puts everything into a clear narrative for us to follow, a distinct black and white sort of situation, a good deed and a bad deed. And I feel like when you alter and twist reality in that way, you end up losing a lot of very important things, things that I really appreciate in a lot of these sort of videos you end up losing empathy. In general, one of the main things that I really hate about these sort of video essays and the people who rip off Sunny V2 as well is that, honestly, it's just a lot less fun to watch. It feels like no one is having fun making these videos. It feels like a slob of content that's made for you to eat up, uh, consume, and and forget about. It has a lot of the similar problems that I brought up in the Mr. Beastification video. There are now so many channels who rip off what Sunny V2 is doing, who copy him to a T, have similarly lazy points to make. And the reason as to why they're doing that is because it works. Sunny V2, with the views that he's getting, makes uh, tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. A lot is being thrown out the window here for the sake of sleekness, and I think that's kind of lame, you know? These little tidbits of personality are what I enjoy about these videos, you know, besides the points that these people are making. I cried uh, when I watched the latest Defunctland video about the Disney Channel theme intro. Who would have thought that that could happen to me from a Disney Channel theme intro? I cried because the video was incredible. It's a video that's gonna stay in my mind for a while, that's gonna inspire me uh, in my own creations. Even stuff like Jenny Nicholson wearing goofy ass outfits in her videos. I think that's a lot of fun. Jake Tran could never do what Big Joel does. He could never film a video in a, in a hot tub. He could never have creepy little angles in his videos. He could never do that, you know, because, because he's a coward. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot to appreciate with channels that you know, kind of decide to stick to their guns, who decide to stay true to who they are, uh, when the alternative is so much more lucrative. Uh, especially Big Joel. I like his videos. You, sh you should check Big Joel out. He's my favorite YouTuber at the moment. I wonder how I'd feel if my life was whittled down to a Sunny V2 cautionary tale. Yeah, what would the title be? Dumb f idiot loser decides to uh, spend a month on his video instead of getting that fuck bag like a like a f idiot. <laughs>
<laughs> this dumb little whiny baby is whining about creativity in another one of his videos instead of getting his bag like a real man. Shut up, dumb little baby. No one wants to see you whining again. Would that be the title? The last video I posted on this channel uh, was a one hour long video about Pickle Rick. And it's unironically my magnum opus. I'm not really embarrassed to say it. It took me a while to make it. it has a musical number in it that I wrote. I hired out a stage uh, to like film it on. Part of the reason as to why I made it was to see if I could make something like that. I wanted to use the video and the length of it as an excuse to, you know, just kind of like have fun. And when I finished that video, after all the work that I put in, I made something that I was really proud of. I, I, I felt happy with it. I really, really was. And then I posted the video and all of that work was reduced to a bunch of numbers. Uh, the watch time, the click through rate, uh, the views, the money that the This is how I, this is, I mean, this is literally how I feel about like effort content, high, higher effort content, like IRL shit. You know what I mean? Um, it is what it is. It sucks, but it is the reality. You know what I mean? People will respond to whatever they want to respond. There are market forces ultimately. Um, people want me to engage in drama. People want me to fucking uh, do just straight up nonstop political content. Talking about people like you, Hassan, I love you. Wait, what do you mean? You know, I, I had a great time yesterday. Um, it was great, but the numbers wise, it was fucking awful. It was so bad. It was like, literally, it was like I was playing, uh, uh, uh Valorant or something like that was what it was numbers wise the video made. That's kind of what you're left with for a while. The video did fine. It actually got a lot less views than a, uh, a drama related video that I yeah, recorded and edited in a day. It had me thinking, is all this like creative bullshit really worth it? And I think that's something that a lot of creators think about at some point. I'm sure that's something that Jake Tran thought about before he made that sort of transition in his channel. Why should I be busting my ass working for hours on end and uh, make a lot less money than what I can potentially make? As much as I don't like the way that Sunny V2 talks about stuff, there is something relatable to that. Something in that voice exists in my head as well. This idea of, you know, what's stopping me? The whole thing got me thinking that maybe, maybe it's time for me to sell out a little bit. Harley's a relatively, I would say, new content creator, and he's he's like working on his voice, uh, and it's getting better every video I watch. He still needs to like, uh, as an old content creator, I would just say brevity is probably a little bit. Some, I feel like this is something I I I've been watching him for like four years. No, but like recently he's been uh, popping off. that about everyone it's because it's true